All right, so in this video, we're talking about reading between the lines. Uh, one of the things that many people have or say that they have a lot of trouble with is understanding or reading for depth. And what I want to argue in this video and to help you start thinking about it is actually you're really good at reading. You just don't always realize that the same skills that you use for reading many things throughout your life, uh, you can also apply to literature. So reading in many ways is just taking a framework of different tools, really kind of a set of glasses as it were, to look at and understand and analyze something. And what I would say is you do this constantly throughout your day. If you're walking down the street, one of the things that you are doing is trying to read people, figure out what they're doing, where they're going. Are they going to get in your way? Are they moving out of your way? Figuring out what cars are doing, figuring out, you know, this vast intersection of lots of different information and how to weave your way through it effectively. You do this in conversations, right? Where if you're surrounded by a bunch of different people, people, maybe your coworkers, maybe your family members, you're trying to read what is not being said, not just what is being said. You're trying to fill in the blanks about what certain statements mean. And so that frame of trying to kind of understand what's going on when not everything is explicit is exactly what you do when you read. Now, when I say that you have already done this a lot of times before, I want to show a couple ads and show that one of the things that go into your head is this analytical ability to think about and figure things out, right? So one of the best places you're probably doing this regularly is with advertisements. Now there's some advertisements that are absolutely straight on. Like it is clear you're trying to sell me, you know, a product. You're trying to sell me headphones. How do I know? Because you say buy these headphones and there's a person in the, you know, in the video, in the picture that has headphones. Okay. But then there's lots of other ads that make us work a little bit. And there's some research around that, that if we have to work to think about what the ad is trying to tell us, it sticks with us. We think of it that much longer. So, the, and then there's other ads that intentionally play with the audience, right? Trying to be either misdirective or trying to play around to get a reaction. So it's very much like reading literature. They're not necessarily direct. They want to make you work a little bit. So here we have this example from Shell and it says, we have the technology, let's go. Can anybody tell me what that means? Right? We're, so right now we're looking at this and we're saying, well, what does this mean? We have the technology. Well, does that mean you have the technology to fill my car with gas and let's go is because they have it, we can go, we can drive. Um, is it because there's a new app, right? We have the technology. Is there a new app that makes it really easier to fill my gas tank? Um, there's a lot of interesting questions in this ad, right? Is basically six words. Um, this is what I want you to think about is we, we are doing this deconstruction regularly. Here's another example. Now, again, here's an interesting question of whether it was actually intentional or not. So in this advertisement, we have Ace Hardware from a simple start to a fabulous finish. And we have this person, he, this gentleman, he is standing on a stepladder and behind him is this rainbow. So on one hand, we see, okay, like this is the implicate, you know, the, the, the straightforward potential message is, you know, you can have any kind of great colors. So you can have a simple start, right? You've got the little step ladder, you've got the, bu the buckets of paint in front, uh, and you can, you know, paint away whatever you want to do. You can finish up, you can, you can paint a room however you want to do it. But if we're looking at symbols, if we're thinking about the representation here, it's interesting that you have, you know, from a simple start to a fabulous finish. And that fabulous finish coupled with the rainbow behind this gentleman 
may suggest something else, right? So it's this question of, well, is Ace Hardware right now trying to sell me paint? Or is it trying to tell me or to communicate that it's somehow celebrating pride, that it's embracing the LGBTQ flag, that it, you know the, the term of fabulous uh, or fabulous finish in relation to the rainbow tells me, you know, could mean something else is going on here. And so I think this is a really interesting advertisement and it's an interesting, it's an interesting representation of how we work to interpret because it could be very straightforward. It could be very simple messaging. And yet it's very curious that advertiser, you know, advertisers in the modern era would not think about the language and painting, you know, very clearly across the center of the ad, a rainbow color that looks very much, you know, from the, from the gentleman, from, you know, from his, uh, what would be his left side to the, to the end of the advertisement very much looks like a flag, right? So this is one of those interesting questions and, but we only get there because we're making these connections. Here's another interesting one, right? So this this particular poster is again this fascinating reading between the lines so we have the swimmer and she's saying i take a sheet in the pool and these are i guess energy strips i'm not quite sure what they do but they're from gnc as we can tell uh, but we also know this is actually a play on words right this is this is most likely quite intent it's quite intentional it's supposed to make you laugh right because in this in this framing i take a sheet is supposed to be or supposed to sound very much like i take a shit in the pool so here is again this opportunity where like there's the straightforward read oh here's a swimmer and they really make use of these energy strips but it's also meant to be kind of you know, self, uh, self, kind of self mocking or not taking them themselves too seriously. So, you know, we have this ad where the person says, I take a sheet in the pool, playing on that, the sound of the word sheet with shit. So these ads are here as examples for you to think about what happens when you're reading. You want to be looking for double meanings. You want to be looking for things that are intentional, things that juxtapositions, how things are set up next to each other that may suggest more than just what is going on. Like in this advertisement, you know, this person saying, I take a sheet in the pool. Um, yes, that could be taken straightforwardly, but it seems like it's a very you know, a very intentional decision of all the ways that this could have been said, right? You know, I use sheet, I use sheet for swimming, right? But it was constructed in this way to have that play on words. So the reason I talk about this is because by and large, we have to think about and understand that language is this web of interconnected ideas. When we are reading literature, we have to remember that all the words in the work are intentionally selected and intentionally arranged, very much like a spider web. They're all connected, and the idea is that somewhere you have, you know, in order for the web to work, you have to have all of these cross connections in order to, well, catch the fly. Um, in this case, it's in order to kind of produce a meaningful experience for the reader. One that is not just, oh, I read this and it was interesting, but also demonstrates, you know, how ideas can be interwoven in a meaningful way and create a pattern like a spider web that just couldn't be done if you try to string together individual sentences on their own merit. So this brings us to when we're reading, particularly in this class, what we want to think about is there, there's two things we want to bring to bear. We want to understand that context is always important. Now, that's the context of the reading itself, right? So we want to think about whenever words, whenever imagery, all of the things that are used, how that is related to everything else that's going on in that story, in that essay, in that piece, in that poem, 
right? So it is relational and it is contextual to everything within the written piece. But it's also contextual to the world outside the written piece. And what I mean by that is every work that we look at was composed in written, conceived of, what have, you know, uh, edited in a particular time and place. And as we'll talk about in later videos, you know, every writer, every creator, when they're creating, is always creating something that is connected to, grounded in, related to the world in which they live. So we always want to be thinking contextually and understanding the context within the piece and around the piece is going to help us find clues as to what the work is and what the work is trying to communicate, how the work is trying to connect to the reader, who the audience is, and what we can expect or anticipate the audience to respond to. So with that in mind, I want to actually just do a short exercise here. Um, I want to do this because, you know, students often feel they don't have the analytical tools to really study literature. And so what I'm going to do is I am actually going to have show you with just two words that you are quite the analyzer when it comes to language, that you've got a robust analysis tool inside your head that's really thinking about what words mean. So are you ready? Okay. Let me set the scene. Imagine somebody you care about deeply that you're in conversation with maybe there was a little bit of tension there was a miscommunication or some confusion or you might have gotten them upset imagine that happens and they send you a text that says i'm fine what do you make of that are they fine how do you know they're fine is saying I'm fine straightforward and clear? It's just two words. I mean, it's technically three, right? Because it's I am fine. But we, you know, we do our, our, con our contractions here. So think about this. Think about all the different things this could mean. I would encourage you to pause the video right now and write, you know, spend five minutes just write down all the different things that this could mean. Because I say this, because we often, at least in American culture, English, you know, in American culture, U.S. culture, we, we hear this many times said, I'm fine. And we know that the person saying it is anything but. So we get these texts from one another, this text message that says, I'm fine. And immediately we go into analysis mode. Well, what do we mean by I'm fine? Is that, is the person actually fine? Are they really mad? Are they not so mad? Uh, do they, you know, is this a flippant, I don't care? Um, what do we make of this? Now, here's another thing. Does punctuation matter? So that previous one was just I'm fine. This one has I'm fine with an exclamation point. Well, does that help us? Does that... Tell us, does it, does it answer? Because I could see that being excitingly, or who says I'm fine with an exclamation when they're actually fine, right? I'm fine, right? That, that, I don't know, that doesn't come, you know, does anybody joyously say I'm fine? Like, no, because if you're, you're, you're using an exclamation, you're not going to use an exclamation with the word like fine. That seems con contradictive. What if it's just a period? I'm fine. Well, we know in some we, we know in texting the period can communicate a bit more like you're not fine, but you are just putting an end to it. Question mark? Now that really confuses us. I'm fine? Ooh, like I don't I, I that's not a text I want to get. So do you see what I'm doing here? Like these are many different ways we can look at just three words or two and a half words and start to think about what are the different meanings and you're you're doing this like this is something you do regularly you hear words from other people and you start to wonder about what they actually mean what is the hidden meaning what is the secondary meaning what if you get this one i'm fine and a smiley face well maybe this person understands that 
you know, to say I'm fine, maybe they actually are fine, but know that fine doesn't, isn't always clear. So they add a smiley face or they're not fine. And they're giving a smiley face that is kind of ironic or an angry smiley face. We've gotten those, or at least I've seen those before. What if they start using different fonts, right? Does, does this feel better? Or what about this? Uh, how about this? Right, doing high Im doing impact font. Um, I don't know if I feel, you know, if I if I got that text, if I feel any better. So, or what if it's a little more italics or a little more scripted? What if I get this message? No, period. Really, period. I'm fine. Period. There. Now we've gotten to five words. Does anybody think? They understand, or they, they, you know, is there, is this really what it's saying, or is this saying something else? And that's the question we're playing with with literature is there is what is being said, and then there's what we're trying to understand is not being said. Right? So, what about this one? No, comma, really, comma, I'm fine. Maybe they're just trying to be reassuring. Could be. So, what I'm hoping this this exercise has done and, and what I'm you know what I'm trying to get you revved up for is to help you understand that you actually already have the ability to read and analyze literature. And you have that ability because you've spent most of your life trying to read other people, trying to read the world around you, trying to read advertisements, which can be just as tricky, just as elusive, just you know just as complex. You've watched movies that are equally often trying to suggest things without actually telling you things. And so I tell you this so that as you go into reading, take all of those skills that you already have and start to transfer them, start to challenge the words that are being given to you, start to question them, question the meaning, question the reasons behind them. All right, that's all I got for now. I hope this is helpful. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. If you have any comments, uh, please let me know. All right, take care.